Okay, so here we are now in Agios Georgios. I think I pronounced that correctly, but uh, I do apologize to any of my Greek audiences who might question my, uh, my pronunciation there. I do apologize. Um, so here we are in Agios Georgios, and we're now about to take the track over on top of that mountain over there. Um, also named Agios Georgos, I believe it's one of the highest points in Corfu, about 390 meters. And the track actually begins over here um, by Agios Nicolas, which basically means the St. Nicholas Church or chapel. And uh, we're going to take the path over the mountain and on the other side there will be a beach. So let's take a look and see what we can find, shall we? So, uh, according to a sign that we've just seen, uh, two kilometers into this trek, there'll be a monastery, an old 16th century monastery that overlooks the beach. Um, that one that's supposed to be a bit more private and quite uh, quaint. So, um, I'm quite excited. So let's go take a look and what, see what we can find. How about that? Uh, well, to be fair, this view on the way down, coming into the beach, is absolutely stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Almost near enough at the beginning of the path, we reached Miratiotissa Beach, which was situated beneath a huge rocky hill. It even has a nudist section in spite of its rather small size, so encountering naked people here shouldn't really be a surprise to anybody that visits. Nevertheless, it's rather isolated, so one shouldn't worry too much about it being busy. Even if you don't decide to go on the beach itself, the views from the walking path are stunning enough to simply absorb and enjoy the nature of it. So, here we are at the monastery. And as the sign says, I believe this is supposed to be a 16th century monastery. Quite rewarding to get here, actually. So we're coming to the monastery now, and um, it seems to be open to the public. And to my surprise, um, there is actually a really quaint uh, Greek Orthodox chapel, and that's really, really interesting. So let's take a look. The monastery of Mytiotissa was supposedly built around 400 years ago, albeit the origins of its foundations are still a little vague. According to a legend, the monastery was founded and built on the site of an old shrine within a cave that housed an icon of the Virgin Mary of Irtiotosa. Unfortunately, the only existing manuscripts that point to the origins of this site come from a priest that served in the monastery between the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Yeah, there's another little room over here. I love these little traditional Greek Orthodox chapels. I mean, they have this sort of this very um, palpable feeling of Greekness about them, um, both in terms of culture and also in terms of the Greek Orthodox ethos and culture in itself, the religious culture in itself. Um, I'm fascinated by it. Okay, so we've just come out of the monastery and we're now headed up to the summit. There is a, there's actually a path that leads directly up there. It's about 1.4 kilometers from the monastery um, and it's quite steep, but once you get up there, the view is worth it. So I'm quite excited to see what we have next. Let's do it. For hiking enthusiasts, such as myself and my wife, and hopefully one day my son who is often exposed to it, Corfu is one of the greatest places in Europe that I've had the privilege to discover. The island is full of fun and exciting paths that also enable you to encounter the wonderful nature that Corfu has to offer. With that said, I would also advise that hiking on the island requires some careful precautions, e.g. 
ensuring that the correct apparel is brought with you, such as the correct type of shoes, because the last thing you want is to be walking on a rocky and jagged surface with unsuitable footwear. <coughs> Make sure you also bring enough water and sunscreen, especially during the summer months. If your walk takes you up high altitudes, maybe bring something with long sleeves to ensure that you keep warm in case the climate starts to get colder. As some parts of the hikes on the island can get quite remote, ensure that you're fit enough to walk the longer ones and that you have a fully charged cell phone with you at all times. There are dozens of trails to choose from on the island and most are usually marked rather well to let you know that you're headed in the right direction, so it's difficult to get lost. But before you head off on a hiking trail, maybe do some extra research on the ones that you think that you would enjoy the most and the ones that you think that you are most capable of doing. There are plenty of websites online and books from online bookstores that detail the hiking trails that are available on the island. Also, be sure to watch your step because one of the most poisonous European snakes, the nose horn viper, is also resident of the island. It is very rare to get bitten, but if you do, immediately call the emergency number 166 or 112. Here we are on top of uh, the hill of St. George and uh, we have the monastery or a chapel over here again. Unfortunately, you can't see the view because it's a very foggy day, but the fog in itself is quite beautiful, I must say. And uh, yeah, quite a quite an exhilarating experience, <laughs> but definitely worth doing if you come over here to Corfu, 100%. As an extra precaution, I would also advise that you take a map of the hiking trail with you and maybe some form of GPS to ensure that you keep in line with the selected trail. All in all, an adventure holiday on the island of Corfu wouldn't be complete without at least one hike from the various hiking trails that are available on the island. And in our opinion, it is completely worth it, even if it is a bit more demanding when having to carry a child all the way along with you. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel.